Hey guys, what's up? It's Sisson here. Now, a knife is only one half of a complete set, and so today we're going to be making the sheath, or scabbard, for Geralt's trophy knife, the one that you've seen wearing on his hip. I'll now take a brief moment to complain about historical knife scabbards. They're lame. Now, Knife and dagger scabbards from Europe from the 15th century, which is where The Witcher 3 draws a lot of visual influence from, generally are of a construction that one, has the seam running down the back of the knife, and two, the scabbard extends a very good way up the handle of the knife. Now, both of these things run completely contrary to what's depicted, and so in this build, I will be focusing less on the history and more just trying to replicate what's shown on screen. Then you might be asking yourself, Grant, how do you decide which of the builds you bend the rules for? And the answer is arbitrarily. So I'll be using modern sheath making techniques to make the scabbard as it's depicted in the game. One that's a little bit more familiar to our modern palette and quite a handsome piece at that. As a further constraint on myself, because I deserve to be punished, I'm going to build this as a one day make and I'm going to try to finish this inside of a day. And if I don't make it inside of a day, then I'll just edit this part out of the intro and none of you will be any the wiser. So let's get into it. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is taking this piece of A4 paper and folding it in half. Next, because I know that the thickness of my leather is 4mm roughly, I'm going to mark off 4mm along here. Now the next step is to take the knife that we will be making the sheath for and to trace around it. Now if you are new here, I will point out that this, this absolutely beautiful replica of Geralt's trophy knife from every cutscene where you take a trophy from a monster, I had this made for me by Levi the Village Blacksmith, who I will link to below in the description because Guy is absolutely amazing and more people need to know about him. What we're going to do is place that just below where the line is. Now the next thing that we're going to mark out is what's called the welt. I'm going to have a 10 millimeter welt. So I'll just mark that out there. What the welt is, it is a piece of leather that runs in between the two sides of the sheath. It protects the thread from the blade of the knife. Because if you think about it, if my sheath is just two pieces of leather with nothing in between them, every time I slide my knife into the sheath or out of the sheath, you can see how I'm exposing the thread binding these two edges together to the edge of the knife. So all I'm going to do here is join the dots Now side on, this knife sheath is very angular. It kind of goes up and then it goes straight. And that's what I'm gonna try and emulate in my shape here. You may notice that I've stopped the welt at this line. The welt does not need to go all the way to the spine. As the leather folds, it will fill in that gap. You'll see as it all comes together, but the welt is going to be short at this end. I think that's our pattern. Here's a tip for free. If you work with veg tan leather, store your hides better than I do because mine, <laughs> mine got a sunburn. So um, why don't we be using that piece? So you can see in my cut that there are multiple layers visible. There's one, two, and kind of a third down the bottom. That's because I took multiple passes to cut it. If you have a better knife, or a more skilled, or know how to use a crescent knife, so both, if you cut the leather in one smooth pass, you won't end up with those telltale lines. We should be able to hide this. We should be able to disguise this in the finishing. Next, I'm going to trace the outline for the welt. Now. This is a trick that I'm trying for the first time, so no shouting at me in the comments if it goes wrong. But instead of cutting this out, I'm just gonna doop, mark along the 
inside line with a ball. Then we can play connect the dots. I personally find that leather is a lot easier to cut and it's got a little bit of moisture in it. Now your climate may provide moisture from the air, but I can guarantee you that in Australia it does not. There's our welt. Now I'm going to try and also get the strap out of this. What we are going to do next is bevel some, but not all of these edges. This is an edge beveler. It will allow us to put a little chamfer on some of the edges. Now, the main reason for putting the chamfer on is that when we later treat the edges so that they're not quite so fuzzy, that tends to have like, hang on, getting ahead of myself, but this bears explaining. Later on, we're going to slick down these edges with an edge slicker and running that along the edge is going to have the effect of causing that leather to mushroom out. So to preempt that mushrooming, using this edge beveler, that's going to give us an incredible chamfer. You can still actually see pen marks on this one, but as I chamfer it, you'll see that those will peel right off. Oh my God, it's also the most satisfying noise that you can make in leather working, Jesus. With the sheath itself, we're only going to chamfer these, this edge that's going to become the throat. We're not gonna do the sides yet, that comes later. The next thing that we are going to do is to dye our leather here. So, real quick rundown. Going to moisten the leather with a little bit of water that is going to help it better to absorb our alcohol-based dye. I will be using Beebing's Pro Dye. I'm gonna be using the walnut if you watched the trouser video. Hi, welcome back, thanks for coming along. You'll know that I had a lot of trouble with this last time, but it should work a lot better on this leather. Let's go a little bit darker around the edges and hopefully this will give it a tiny bit of a mottled patina. Now, I'm going to leave these to dry and grab a bite to eat. So I will see you in about one second. So now that our dye has dried, the next step is going to be to burnish the throat edge. And I think I'm gonna burnish the belt loops as well. So how do we burnish an edge? Good question, glad you asked, let me show you. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is start off with a piece of beeswax and then apply that liberally to the edge of the leather that we're going to be working with. And the next step is to get our burnishing tool. And then it's simply a matter of applying friction onto the edge. Now, luckily this four mil leather is quite thick and very robust, it will hold itself up and that is going to allow me to have a quick conversation to you about the belt loops while I'm doing this. Now, CD Projekt Red, you absolute magnificent madman. Why did you go ahead and make the belt loops? Look, they rendered a belt loop in between the sheath and Geralt's thigh. What player is ever going to see that? I had to install a free camera mod to see it. I think I might be the only person who played The Witcher 3 who noticed that they modeled the belt loops in between the sheath and Geralt's thigh. Therefore, I can only come to the conclusion that they put those belt loops there for me. That was a present for me from CD Projekt Red, so thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. Now when I say nicer, that's a little bit of a weasel word, isn't it? Makes it nicer. What does that mean? That's a very subjective personal experience, so let me show you a close-up. Here is an edge unperturbed by the worries of being burnished. Now this is the edge that you just saw me burnish. You can see there are no fibres coming off of the edge of that. That is just a lovely, smooth edge. So, let's hit all the other edges up.
Now, with all those holes lined up, we'll be able to stitch this on and then we can get to forming it. So that has gone swimmingly. We now have a belt loop attached to our sheath. And what we are now going to do is the forming part where this is going to be folded in half to accept the shape of the knife. For that, I'm going to put a fair bit of water. Surprise, surprise, I'm talking about water on leather again. I'm gonna put a fair bit of water on this so that it doesn't crack and wrinkle as we bend it around. And then what we're going to do is basically make a little sandwich out of this and glue the welt in between. So you can see that welt is just going to be sandwiched in between here. All I need to do is trim off the top end of it. There we go. A nice little hot dog in a bun there. So this is why the welt on the pattern was cut up to the four mil line, not up to the fold line. It's because it only needs to go up to the other side of this. So that looks like a good size. What I'm going to do now is put some glue on this, clamp it all into position. That is absolutely lovely. Hmm. Okay, so interesting development. You guys, you guys know how you should always use the right tool for the job, right? Well, this is my stitching iron or pricking iron or whatever you want to call it. It has served me well in everything that I've thrown at it, except for this because, as you can see, my tines are only about eight and a half mil long. It can't go all the way through. So here's the clever workaround that I've devised. So step one, I bash it in all the way up to the tines. You can see I haven't punctured through on the reverse side yet. And already having aligned the previous holes, I'm simply going to flip it and tap out these next three holes. Now, with any luck, using a needle, at that last hole, you can see we pierce through. Because everything is nice and aligned, striking the holes through from either side, they will meet in the middle. However, this isn't how I was intending for the project to go. So I'm just going to uh, punch all of the holes on both sides. It's gonna take me forever, but you know, you'll be treated to a montage or something. It's not want not, this shit's expensive. I know the Geralt's knife sheath is very distressed and very worn, but here's the thing. You can't just half-ass something. You can't make something imperfect and say that it's rustic or whatever. It's best to make something right and then distress it. There are just a couple of ways that you can tell genuine wear it looks very different than a poorly made item you know look at t-shirts that you've had in the cupboard for a couple of years versus a new t-shirt that's made poorly the short fallings are in different areas right so we're going to try and get this nice and then later on i'm going to ruin it 
God, I wish I had one of those machines that does this. Moment of truth time. I did it! This is now nice and saturated, so this is a wet form. Wet forming, we want to get it completely saturated, and then when it dries, it'll be the shape that we left it to dry in. So this, when it dries, will be the correct shape for the knife, and then once it's dry, I'll treat it with oil. The cling film will keep the blade of the knife safe from the water while we leave this to set. And I'm oh no, no, I won't leave it overnight. This one day build will be done in a day. We'll leave this to set for like, a couple of hours. It's only 7 p.m. I've got plenty of time up my sleeve. So it didn't dry in time. Um, it is clearly the next morning and the sheath did not dry out before I got to bed. So this one day build has officially taken more than one day, which is a tradition. I, I, I suppose I'm just I'm just meeting expectations. So anyway, here is the sheath as it stands. It has come out wonderfully. Pretty, pretty object I've made. But in my rush to get it done in a day, I actually forgot one of the elements, which is the little black straps that we see. Now my suspicion is that we are meant to interpret these straps as the fastening method. In, in our case, they will be purely decorative. We will cut a few strips, just glue those onto the main body, and then all it will need is a coat of oil, and it is complete. So won't you come join me on the workbench and we'll finish this not quite a one day build. And there you have it. After just over a day, my one day make is complete. I am so, so thrilled with how this scabbard came out and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. This was part of my build of Geralt's Manticore armor from The Witcher 3, so if that sounds like something that struck your fancy, please do feel free to check out some of my previous videos or hang around for future ones. Otherwise, enjoy your continued browsing on the broader YouTube. You guys, take it easy. And I'll catch you next time. If you want to hear more about wet forming, go back, look at some of my earlier videos. I talk about it. I talk about it too much. I don't shut the fuck up about wet forming.